Hello, hello, and welcome back to Cars of Glasgow. I'm Thomas, and today you join me with this new Lexus RZ300e. This is the electric vehicle that Lexus offer in addition to the UX300d. However, this over the RX450e offers more range. You can now expect to see a claimed 295 to 297 miles of range. So this is going to be a quick review of the exterior, the interior, what it's like, and let's crack on with this video. So this RZ300D is a premium plus, so that means it adds things like these 18 inch two-tone alloy wheels. We're also going to get things like 10 speaker audio system. We're going to see intelligent clearance sonars front and rear. Then you're going to see the 14 inch touch screens we get in there along with the Tahara synthetic rather upholstery. Also includes things like the panoramic sunroof, power tailgate, privacy glass, all these things adding into the vehicle. Now, if you're interested, this car charges in a three phase 11 kilowatt hour, 16 amp, 240 volts, and about 6.5 hours. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you're expecting around 297 miles of range claims from this car. Now, about 201 brake horsepower, which means the top speed of this RZ300D is around 99 miles per hour, to be exact. And we're also going to get 0 to 60 in 8 seconds. And they're claiming an energy consumption of 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour. And an insurance group 39E. Now, you may be looking at the car and thinking, how does this fit in the Lexus range? And I'm going to tell you. So, the overall length for this vehicle is 4.8 metres. The width is about 4.895. So, pretty similar to what we've seen in the Lexus LM. Just sh shorter or narrower than the LC. And we're also going to see the height of 1.63 metres. The wheelbase is 2.8, so very generous wheelbase there. The curb weight is just around 2 tonnes. And the boot capacity is 522 litres. There is no front boot in this car. Now, on the front end of the Lexus RZ, I love the fact that they've taken the spindle grille but made it like an electric EV friendly because electric cars do not need front grille for the radiators you know, to cool the engine. We've got a spindle grille here that's kind of mostly flat, but then they've got these kind of ridges around the side here. So it's kind of giving you a more spaced out, modern vibe and interpretation, I guess, of the like, spindle grille that we've known and loved over the last like six, seven years, maybe even 10 years now. Um, we do have the camera up front and nothing we've not seen too much radically different from the RZ450e. So if you're interested in charging the vehicle, the charge port's up front and you can pull this flat back for your rapid charging here. So guys, this is my favourite side and angle of the RZ. I don't know why, I don't know what it is. I like these fins, I just like this high up design, just the way it looks. And again, if I was ordering it, maybe the grey, but probably the copper colour just for that kind of modern feel. Now, I think it still looks great, chunky, you know, great ride height. Open the doors, all this blends in with the floating roof line and the bi-tone paint here. Now, if I open the boot, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can do it in the fob, the engine, engine running, the battery's on. That's why we're buzzing away there. Uh, we'll go ahead and open the boot. It is electrically operated, and this is going to give you your 522 litres of boot space. Now, let me bring the camera around so you can see it. So here we have the RZ's boot space. It's 522 litres. As you can see, it's probably around about just above the knee mid thigh level. There's not too much of a lip here. You can just go ahead and shove goods in. Of course, there's a little bit of storage underneath, but they've got the charging cables in here. And probably realistically, you would want something like that just so they're out of the way. And underneath it is lined with a kind of material here that is soft. So you probably don't want anything too wet back there. Uh, but yeah, there's at least there's a space for charging cables and you've got this flat off area and then here it's got the wee kind of cutouts here So I guess you could probably get a pair of golf clubs in here There is things like tie down hooks of these little stretchy material here and then your anchor points and the seats do fold 60 40 as well So if you do need to fold them and then this does fold in half as well So I've seen that and you can fold that underneath here if you need a little bit more room You know for the boot space just be conscious that this is kind of like a, one of those coupe style SUV, so you're going to lose a little bit of room here. It's not as boxy or practical as maybe an RX, but if you are looking at for a dog, maybe check that out to make sure it fits in before you go ahead. But yeah, that's all in all, all lined with the carpet all around. It is very premium back here feeling, and that's about it. It is electrically operated, so we can push this button, and the tailgate's going to close. 
Now on the rear we're going to be noticing the Lexus badge has disappeared and we now have Lexus spelled out across the rear of the car. Now I have heard online or read online that this is due to some markets not knowing what the L means um, and same with other brands like Tesla so they've just put that out there to spell it so you know exactly what you're driving behind. Now this denotes the 300E model and that's really the only significant difference here is between the 450 and the 300E visually as you're going to be able to see the 300E badging in the back. Still handsome in the back, I like the tail light, the way it's all bar across and it's quite thin and it goes out to the side. I think it's a nice design, you know, there's not too much else to say back here. There's no rear wiper, so it's worth noting that if you're one of those people like an SUV for rear wiper, it's designed so the airflow is going to clear it. And this car is based on, or shares its platform at least, with the BZ4X from Toyota and the Subaru Solterra. This one's just a little bit wider and a little bit more premium feeling. And we'll get out in the road and I'll let you kind of make your own judgement once we've got the car going. Let's jump into the back. Okay, so you join me inside the back of the Lexus RZ300E. Now, just like we've seen before in the 450E, we do have a relatively flat floor, which means you're going to be able to get free abreast fairly easily here because there's no big high transmission hump. Now, just like what we've seen in the BZ4X, the seats are a little bit lower at an angle here, so you do feel like you're sitting a little bit like that instead of maybe being perched like that and it's unfortunately nothing like the Lexus LM that <laughs> we have driven today. However, this has got two map pockets behind it, great glass panoramic roof. If you get the top spec Takumi, this can do not go opaque at a touch of a button. We also have a little armrest here with two cup holders. There's not too, too much going on here, you just know it's got a premium material, it's airy, you can get your child seats back in here, the doors open at a good height. And there's a little door bin down here for a bottle of juice. We do have window switches, door lock, and then the electronic door release. You just push that button and it pops open. And then you have that kind of premium squeegee material on the door card itself here. Worth one last bit of noting is worth we do have USB-C chargers and a 12 volt power outlet. But yeah, let's jump into the front because that's where the action is. It's also worth noting that RZ has those new Lexus handles where it's like a little actuator button inside here that electronically releases it. The door handles themselves are fixed. We are now inside the front cabin of the Lexus RZ. Very familiar place to be for anybody that's been in a modern Lexus. We do have that 14 inch infotainment screen here. Fast responsive, similar to what we've seen in Toyota and Lexus products before and that allows you to you know, change things like you know, radio, Apple Android, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you can do all that thing. My main takeaway is I quite like the fact that the heated seats, cooled seats are all at a touch of a button. And the RZ has those radiant heaters, so they're going to be a little bit of heat emanating from underneath here, as well as underneath this bit of the dash. So at a touch of a button, maybe during winter you want to save some battery power without putting the air corner, you're able to touch that. And that's going to emanate some heat here. I tried it in the 450E, it worked fantastic. It's 25 degrees today. I'm just going to presume it's working fantastic today in the 300E. Now, the clever thing about Lexus is you're able to touch, touch these buttons here on the screen and you can set it to auto. So just let the car work it out. Auto, cooled seats, heat, heated seats if it's winter, heated seating can be left on auto, all at touch of a button. And they're always consistently there at the bottom of the screen although they're part of the screen they're always there so not in a sub menu so you might just want to quickly go and touch something it's there same thing for your fan speed you can do so and the temperature gauge is within the rotating wheel knob as well it's got a nice blue to orangey red hue there so that's quite nice to see we do have USB-C chargers there as well there's like three of them and a wireless charger there as well and a button for your camera so that's going to give you your 360 surround view camera stitching it together it's fairly handy for when you're going to park now we do have two cup holders here with little squeezy bits in there to hold various cans of juice etc and we do have the kind of drive selector this is an interesting one because it's similar to what we've seen in the BZ, but it's not like any other Lexus. So you put your foot down, push down for neutral, and then you're like down and left for reverse, or down and right for drive, and a separate button for park. Which I'm glad it's got a separate button for park, but it's just a very different way of doing things. Just below that, we do have a button here for your hold, you know, automatic hold when you're doing a set of lights or something to prevent you rolling away. Most modern cars have that. Lexus allow you to do it through a physical button. Traction control, 
electronic parking brake and a dual hinged centre console which seems to be making its way across the Lexus range which is welcomed because how often do you open it up to the driver and the passenger can't get in. It is lined with the fuzzy stuff in here and it's fairly deep so that's quite a good thing to mention. Now, unfortunately, we can't do a glove box video today because there is no glove box in the Lexus RZ. However, there is little bits of storage underneath the centre console here and it is lined with this kind of like leatherette material that says Lexus on it with a handle. That's under the centre console. In the BZ, it's open. In the RZ, they kind of gave it wee leather flaps. The material on the overall, doing a fairly high quality and premium. I do appreciate what they're doing with this car. Do you know, it does feel you know, durable, wipeable and upmarket enough with the white stitching here. And I feel like they've done a little bit more of the design elements in here than the RX, for example, because in front of the driver in RX, it's just like a flat bit of plastic. This, we've got like changes of material and a light strip of kind of this kind of silvery trim. So that's quite cool. Everything again is logically laid out, as you'd expect in a Lexus power button to turn it on, nice visually clear. We've got the sensor up here to gauge if your eyes are paying attention. And then we've got these two buttons on the steering wheel. Now these you may have seen before if you've watched the previous RZ video. What they link up to is the screen ahead. So they're kind of touch capacitors. You run your finger over it, connects to the heads up display. And you're able to see, like, you know, your cruise control. You can switch between modes. Same on the left hand side, you can switch between like voice, volume control. They do multiple things. So you can touch the button below, switch between, there we go, mode, audio, or you can switch between voice and calls. So it's quite a good way to use like one button you can switch between and it gives you different variations of it. More and more manufacturers are incorporating something to do with that. Um, so that's quite good. We do have physical stocks with indicators as well as the wipers and your three stage memory seating here. Do you know? So if you want to have three drivers in here, you can do so. Physical buttons you can set, all you do is hold one and say set, and it will set for position one. Um, so that's quite a nice wee trip, the same as the odometer up there. Um, obviously there's no fuel further cap release and there is a button here for electronic tailgate. Just push that and it will pop open. Over on the right hand side is where you're going to see the door switches and the window switches. Now it is new Lexus so they are all flush, there's gone as a little line to let you know where the driver door is. I quite liked that in the previous Lexus models. And there is a button here to fold them in if you need to fold them in, override it, but you can leave it in auto when you lock the car up, it's just going to do so. Now up above we do have a little bit of storage up here, maybe for sunglasses, something like that, it is lined with the fuzzy stuff. And we do have these touch capacitive lights here, which is a nice neat touch as well. If you did have the upgraded model with the roof with the kind of chromatic elements through it, you can touch that, a touch of a button, and it'll go opaque. But overall, that is the interior of the Lexus RZ300e. Now, let's take it a drive. All right, so we're driving the RZ300e. Now, this has got a top speed of 99 miles per hour, 0 to 60 in 8 seconds flat. Now, the benefit of the 300e is going to be the aforementioned range. You're going to get almost 300 miles of range from this car, which... If you were worried before about maybe the range of the 450e, this is probably the Lexus RZ to get for you, just to help alleviate some of that range anxiety. The car offers a host of safety tech, such as front and rear cross traffic alert, over the air system updates, you know, it's got the blind spot monitoring the indicators, which is great as well. But you want to know what it's like to drive behind the steering wheel. Well, we do have electronic adjustment on the seat, so you're able to get a good position. I'm 5 foot 11, and I can get a good, you know, adjustment in here. Plenty of headroom, plenty of shoulder room, you know, and the steering wheel as well is electrically adjusted as well. You know, the nose of the car it dips down a little bit, but I can see fairly far along the bonnet, and the pillars are not too intrusive as well. And there's an NX in front of me, a Mark 1 NX. Similar height to that down in the road and there's also an event to the left so I'm towering above that at least so it does give you that crossover feel if that's what you're after now logically the controls are there and laid out is what we're kind of you're aiming to buy if you're looking at Lexus and that's what this does not disappoint with you know you're getting a quality product based on a platform that's shared with the Toyota and Subaru which I can only presume is going to help with the liability because Toyota have done their best to ensure that the battery in the BZ is going to last 10 years and same in this RZ. 
So if you're going to buy this and own it for a while, or even if you're watching this video far in the future and you're buying, maybe you're trying to buy a six-year-old RZ, this has been designed with longevity in mind. Now, let's go and give it a... Okay, it's got that get up and go. It definitely doesn't feel as lightning fast as maybe we've seen in other Lexus RZ models or equally other electric vehicles, but it's definitely punchy enough. Like, you know, you're getting that torque right off the bat, boom, it goes. So that is a, a, a thing for it, you know. Um, it's going along the road fairly compliantly. Suspension, this is a nice, smooth road in fairness. And yeah, we've got things are going well. So let's put the adaptive cruise control on. Nice, clear gauge on the heads up display. So I can see my lane departure as well as the distance for the car in front. Set it at 50 and we're good to go. Now the adaptive cruise control is going to put the brakes on. Let's see, here we go, here we go, here we go. And we're decreasing down to 15 and a little bit slower as we approach the roundabout. That was a little bit <laughs> frightening there for a second, but we made it and the car's come to complete stop now. That was a good test, I guess, of that now moving off. So yeah, it's got the adaptive cruise control. It brings you to a stop and accelerates you slowly ahead. So that's quite good. Now, once we get round around a bit, we're going to get a good chance to test the handling. I did like the RZ450E, just the, the four-wheel drive. And this is, I guess, a less powerful version, but a more range-friendly version of that model. So let's see if it's got the same handling characteristics. Now, I'm just going to indicate and go round it, turn off the adaptive cruise. And here we go. Yeah, not too much body roll on this. This is quite nice. We're going round at 35 and... It's handling the well road pretty well there. There we go. Quite impressed with that. Um, I've done that earlier on in a van and that was a little bit less exciting, but today that is for sure a positive place to be. Now, what am I rivaling this against? Well, in my head, you know, the Tesla Model Y seems to be the default choice for electric SUVs or crossovers. Um, that's a great product and it's very tech focused. This car is probably going after somebody that doesn't want like, everything on one screen and wants buttons and to interact with a normal car. So potentially maybe something like a BMW iX3, BMW iX, you know, because they kind of cross over in price at that point. Um, I'm just trying to think top of my head because Mercedes-Benz offer like an EQE, which is a lot more money, and an EQB, which is a lot smaller. And I've not driven, at the time of filming, the Polestar 4. Uh, this is definitely larger than a Polestar 2, which although that's like a quasi-car SUV thing, this is out and out an SUV or family friendly just because that flat floor at the back, there's a lot of space in here, definitely fights the class above in terms of packaging. This is one of those cars that's a little bit smaller than you think on the outside, but inside it feels huge. You know, unlike maybe the LC that's huge outside and feels small inside. Um, so I will give the kudos for to the RZ for that. Uh, the 300D definitely offers that. Now, today we're averaging 3.3 miles per kilowatt, so we're a little bit off the 4.2, but not by much. Um, and we've got 81% with 198 miles of range. So that's not too bad either, I guess. So yeah, that is my quick drive of the Lexus RZ300E. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you very much to Lexus UK for having me on the press launch for this car. As always, stay safe and thank you for watching.